Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing finance transformation for insurance. And with us today is Vishwa Swaminathan from PwC and Sofian Khan from Morocco. Gentlemen, according to you, what are the most important challenges that institutions are facing when meeting and exceeding the IFRS 17 standard? It's a very interesting question and uh, fundamentally points out the, one of the key challenges which consistency across the board is the first point is the data. Data is a cornerstone of the entire operation for IFRS 17. Uh, one of the reasons being because insurance firms across a period of time have built a lot of legacy systems, either through mergers and acquisitions which have taken place. And a lot of this data is redundant across the different silos which have been there, which means there's no single version of truth. An actual firm is looking at a different a uh, line of the data versus a finance and operations we're looking at the same transaction in a different level and there's no reconciliation process in place. That's one of the fundamental issues. And on top of that, there is no unified data model or a data single version of truth. Mm, the data is not reconciled plus the data is not harmonized. And that's where a substantial amount of time is actually spent on addressing the data challenges. That's one. The second challenge which we consistently see uh, come across, taking the next step forward, is more of the liability measurement side. The granularity of data on the IFRS 70, which needs to be processed, is huge. So it's just the calculation, not at the policies, but also the grouping the policies at the different cohorts, and manage this across the life cycle from the calculation to the reporting. The th third challenge, which I think is fundamentally important and now is shaping up as a co another key area, is the disclosures. Disclosure in terms of financial statements, movement analysis, and these are not we are referring to just on a quarterly basis. You're also trying to see what would be the impact if I run a what-if scenario to see what would be the impact on the results and see how that would have a shape on the financial statements, how that would impact on my p &L, how that would have an impact on the liabilities, on the CSM release. Uh, the last but not the least is we also see a, a movement towards automating the process. Insurance firms are right now really want to get to a stage where they really would like to improve operational efficiency. They would run, like to more about increasing the automation across the capture of data, running the data quality process, running the liability measurement, and trying to make it more of an end-to-end -end process all the way hand off to report generation, reconciliations, all the way to the level where the CFO and the C-level executive get full visibility of how the contractual service margin has moved, what are the impact on the moment analysis, what are the best case and worst case scenario. And all of that more like we are looking at from a visualization of the management reports where you can click, slice and dice. I think that's the journey which insurance firms are really looking at more from a strategic approach versus the last year when we were looking at it more from a tactical approach. Ishwa? Absolutely. So building on from what Sofiana said, uh, we had regulations before which is confined to a single piece of the architecture or a single process, whereas like IFRS 17 is definitely not. It impacts the end-to-end -end, end -to -end systems architecture along with data being a critical challenge as Sofiana pointed out, as well as execs have to think about what the target operating model should be looking like. So whether they want to just go for minimum compliance and just add on one more process as an IFRS 17 process on top, which we don't recommend, but take that opportunity to streamline the finance process and make the finance function a digitized modern finance function. That's the challenge which the execs are finding out in so many of our IFRS 17 projects. And that has to be enabled by technology uh, that has to have an integrated data model, like you pointed out, Sophia, right. as well as the integrated robust systems changing from the current legacy systems. Mm -hmm. And that also feeds into your uh, financial planning, that uh, strategy planning, as well as consolidation, and your reporting strategy going forward. So it sounds to me that you're saying that IFR 17 is serving as a catalyst to finance transformation or finance uh, modernization. Absolutely, I think that's the advice we are giving for our insurers. So this is not, this is a challenge definitely, but it can also be an opportunity to transform some of the legacy issues which has been built up over the years, either through acquisitions or mergers or through just legacy footprint over the years. So it's a fantastic opportunity for insurers to embrace it and you use that as a catalyst to change. Okay, in your mind, Sofian, what other elements um, does, does IFRS 17 um, engage in or drive that, that enables it to be a catalyst for, for modernization? I think if you're looking at it from the angles of the actuaries who are 
trying to drive it where they want an alignment finance. Because this was, this is not, if you look at IFRS 4 versus IFRS 17, IFRS 4 did not require the involvement of both the teams together. And I think the one uh, fundamental requirement here is the team's actual finance systems and business all need to work together. It's just not about from a compliance point of view, but it's also harmonization of the teams, harmonization of the data, harmonization of the results. We are all looking at a single version of truth. We are already looking at how that has an impact on the business, where actuaries are looking at in terms of the margins and how the business they're creating, how this impacts the finance in terms of the reporting to group, in terms of PL impact, including the different lines of business. It's also underpinning the entire aspect of systems which need to handle the huge volumes which need to be processed at entity and group level. The, and the last but not the least, not to underpin the fact, is you have got to look at how the entire data journey has been through encapsulation of the data, uh, calculation of the results, measurement of the reports, management reporting, all the entire process of data lineage that has to be full. So you're looking at one full process end to end with full seamless integration. I think that's the fundamental area. So you can actually break this down into blocks, but each block is looking at the same results. Mm -hmm. And there's a complete flow going through. That's where, so you're looking at alignment across the, all these three different organizations here. Would another um, byproduct of this be um, reducing the overall TCO that um, system architects face or the CIOs or CDOs face with an organization with the proliferation of self-service analytics that yep. we see um, both within banking and now clearly across the insurance front where they're able to, to download and acquire um, self-loading uh, analytics. They bring in different um, uh, bits of data into Excel. They then run these analytics programs on top of it. Ultimately, you're seeing this this tremendous proliferation of little data stores everywhere. So do you see this as another way in which that can be contained and ultimately rationalized so that we can maintain better lineage in mean, experiencing that? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, a couple of life insurers who I worked with, they had literally seven or eight databases uh, disparate data stores and a number of reporting tools built on top of it. And what they have done is, because of IFRS 17, they gone on a journey to standardize some of the reports. So it comes back to the reporting as well as the uh, as well as the general ledger strategy. Like if we start with the right hand side, like what's your disclosures and what's your KPIs going to be? Like how are you going to cal calculate your commissions going forward? How are you going to calculate your PL going forward? And how are you going to enable all your uh, analysts with the right information at the right time as a self-service, rather than, like you mentioned, the mm. Excel-based uh, reporting, which takes forever. So that drives a transformation, and th this definitely enables standardization of that. Gentlemen, thank you both for your time. I really appreciate your insights. Thank you, thank Prince. Thank you, Prince. IFRS 17, finance modernization. They're important, strategic, and timely conversations. Thank you for watching. <laughs>